Foot Clan, it is that time of year to get into the ultimate draft kit and make sure you are prepared for your draft. Everything you need, we have prepared for you. Tiered rankings, player profile videos, our breakouts, our busts, our sleepers, and we're always updating it. So make sure you get it right now before it's too late at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Is it football time? <laughs> it's a question. No, I heard the question mark. I also heard you laugh at your own joke in the middle of it. Look, when you tell a good joke, it's okay to laugh at it. Yeah, I, I agree. It's just that was... Oh, you didn't think it was a good joke. Ah, I see. No, it was it was okay. I, I heard the question mark. That's good, because the inflection of my voice went down. Yeah, it's just the laughter you... The laughter damaged the question mm. vibe a little bit. But mm. is it football time? I don't know. Houston, New England? Let's find out. Minnesota, Seattle? It's preseason football time. Do we get anyone anyone good tonight? I uh, I wonder CJ if we're going to see baby. Let's go. Okay, all right, all yeah, right. That's good. Backup quarterback for J the Houston Texans. JSN. We should get some JSN snaps tonight. Yeah, and and hopefully some Charbonnet as well. Okay, all right. I'm in. It yeah. is. Yeah, it's football time. You're in. That's on, exciting. You're in on NFL football. Yeah. Oh, that's good, Mike. That's going to help the show a lot. <laughs> Welcome in, one and all. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers with you. Deucers in the building. Al Borland, dressed in black. Keep, keep deucing. <laughs> Weird, right? Yeah, strange. <laughs> I mean, I, um, uh, black beard, black hat, black shirt. Cadillac. Yeah, not bad. And uh, Judge Giamatti here as time well. bomb joke. Yeah. Rap, rap scallion in the building. Over there in Deucers Alley, also black hat. What is happening here? Finally, you know, he's the only one dressing professionally with a polo on today. Oh, I'm missing my work outfit. What am I doing? Yeah, embarrassing. Uh, it is Thursday, August 10th. We are going to talk preseason dreaming today. Talk about some of the stuff we're watching, hoping for. You brought up Charbonnet. The rookies are so fun to watch in the uh, in the preseason. You get to you know, put your eyes on these players at the NFL level and what they can do. And, um, you, you know, you just hope you don't get carry on Johnson in the preseason. Am I right? Am I right? No comment. <laughs> you mean like, like big breakaway. I say, yeah, they drastically move and, up the ADP. Yeah. Yeah. That, that this is that time when you are watching the players that you like and you hope <laughs> it's, it's the most selfish hope of all time. Like, I want him to look good, but not too good. Right. Just good enough to confirm my priors, oh. but not good enough that other people know or if you're what I know. Or if you're really confident in them and you're like, I know this player is going to be good, you want them to just be so quiet in preseason. You're like, just, no, no, don't even play. Just sit him. Yes. The, Absolutely. The Amir Abdullah, the, the, the one cut heard around the world. Now, actually, that's the one I was remembering. Yeah. Carry on looked good too, but it was the Amir Abdullah oh, run that moved two rounds of ADP. The truth is, um, if you're in a dynasty league, you can just fully root for them to succeed, though. True. Right? You don't have to worry yeah. about the draft capital. Um, what do we got going on? The ultimate draft kit available right now. Updated every day. Um, sometimes I give Jason a gift, and, and yesterday I gave him a gift. I moved Devon A. Chain up a little bit. You gave the Foot Clan a gift, and you gave yourself a gift. Mm. I really, I gave you a gift. You should see mm. how close Raheem Mostert and A-Chain are now in production. Proud of you. Does that mean I need to move them down so we can balance things out? Mm, I, certainly I, not. I, I, didn't, I didn't take it to the limit, Mike. <laughs> okay. I didn't take it to the you limit. You didn't want the newcomer to steal the show? No. And uh, so ultimatedraftkit.com, updated every day. Uh, the community, for those of you just joining us, it's at jointhefoot.com. Become a member of the Foot Clan. You get a bonus weekly episode of the show. Some upgrades coming over there soon as well. And we are going to have an in-season app this year. Yeah, baby. I can't promise you exactly when, but as soon as possible, we will be getting you an in-season app very early into the year. Yeah, I had mentioned to the Foot Clan that it will be ready for week one, and then I was told that 
I shouldn't say that, that we can't hit that timeline. And to that, I say, watch me. Watch me. Because it'll be there. It'll be there week one. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sending this to the dev team. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Clip yeah. this up and send it to the dev team. Shiong! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, Impressive. Um, poor guys. Uh, at the FF Ballers over on X. Here's a quick question. Who has risen in your rankings the most during training camp? I'll hop in because it was a training camp I expected to not see the player. It's just Javante Williams. Uh, coming into oh, this gosh. season, he was it, it pretty much, for all intents and purposes, off my board. Just, you know, the, the, the injury, the timeline, the normal medical recovery. It's just a player I wanted to avoid at all costs. And the fact that he was never put on the pup, that he went into training camp, that he's been a full participant, that he was in full padded drills, tackles, going to play in the preseason. I mean, either a guy is or isn't healthy. And, right. and so um, he, my opinion on him has changed the most. I still want to see it in the preseason, see how he looks, if he looks like himself. But there are examples. This this injury was just is more severe than an ACL. If it was just an ACL, it'd be like, okay, you know, it's more like Brees Hall had a less severe injury and his draft capital hasn't been as affected as much. But there are certain human beings that for whatever reason, Adrian Peterson or uh, young Jamal Charles or Todd Gurley, like when they get that bad injury at a certain age, they just, they're fine. They recover quick. And if that's what's happened, I want to be aware of it. Javante is a good answer because, I mean, he was potentially – undraftable yeah if you thought he was going to miss some time combined with the Pirine acquisition the injury um it, I do think there is still the chance and you said it you want to see him in the preseason I still worry about a trap there in the sense that you know Pirine gets involved and 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 he's not 100 percent, and we don't know what this offense looks like but inevitably he's got to go way up people's boards for me it was DJ Moore there's a few answers Mike has one that is also an answer for me but DJ Moore, um, when you look at the the numbers, the passing numbers from Justin Fields last year, combined with the historical situation for DJ Moore, where he just lives in this just eighteen to twenty five fantasy range with no upside, like I do think there's a legitimate chance that this is just a special connection this season, and then Justin Fields make takes that step forward. If you read everything coming out of camp and the type of offense they're putting together and the 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 number of uh screen or not screen slant plays that they're connecting on like the get the ball in DJ Moore's hands type of offense like there if the targets are there for DJ Moore I think he could be one of those surprise picks that's simply not going to go that high up average draft position boards because there's a history and history just kind of holds players back and I you could look at it down the line as a great value yeah it with the actions of the Chicago Bears trading down from – they had the first overall pick. They could have taken anybody they wanted in the NFL draft, and including a quarterback. They chose to, to trade down. They add an offensive lineman, but part of the trade down was you, you add DJ Moore. You don't trade down in the NFL draft from the number one to get a number one wide receiver and then be status quo with your passing attack. Like Your numbers – you only do they that. Go with up. A, you only trade a second <laughs> to get a big wide receiver who's now hurt, Chase Claypool, uh, right? To stay status quo. So I'm I'm in agreement that like the numbers just they should go up, but it's a very scary situation. My the, the player who's risen the most for me during training camp it is Zay Flowers, rookie wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Now we did get a a slight update. Rashad Bateman, who was kind of the de facto number one wide receiver for them heading into the off season. He's off the pup, so he's finally back. He'll be able to get himself into football shape. He's doing what he we does best, which is ride the bike on the <laughs> sideline and kind of like look like you're going to try to play football at some point. He at least has enough time here to be ready for week one. And, and Rashad Bateman, he, can, he is a difference maker. We don't know if he can be a true number one yet. Zay Flowers was drafted in the first round to make sure that this wide receiver core was a, a trio and ready to go. And Zay Flowers, combined with all my thoughts on what I, I'm projecting that Todd Monken will do for the Ravens offense, I'm very excited. All right, let's get into the news. 
News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was about to ask you if you're ready for this one, Jay, but you are. Uh, Frank Reich said Thursday, Miles Sanders suffered a little bit of a oh, tweak of his groin. Just a little bit tweak. At practice on Wednesday, unlikely to suit up for the preseason game. You don't like to see it? No, you don't like to see right when preseason hits. A player who's... I, I, I feel like his biggest knock against him has been his ability to stay on the field is hurt. I don't like it, especially for a player that, I'm, that I've been very into. I've drafted a lot of. I've uh, spoken highly of the expected role. I think Miles Sanders, if healthy, has a phenomenal season. But these, these preseason timeline injuries, when you're within a month to the season, really sucks to have a soft tissue issue like that. If you would like to see his comments on the injury, we mm -hmm. do have them up on groinindex.com. Uh, Kareem Hunt left Indianapolis. <laughs> Which, by the way, I saw... I uh, saw it too. So some thread... I, on Reddit. Reddit popped up, and it was... Someone was... Uh, I think they were happy to find out that it's not just a bit on the show. I mean, it is. But this is a real this is it's a, a real, real website, website. Yeah. That, yeah. that it's like automatically, automated automatically updated we send our look we have a beat reporter the fantasy footballers have a reporter for each and every team mm -hmm. to make sure that we go get that quote and then they just as soon as a groin injury hits technically if you look at their credentials they they aren't part of the fantasy footballers. They are part of groinindex.com. Oh, okay, they, right. They are okay. there they're, representing they're foot only in the, the bill for this. You know, really important. Currently six players. Miles uh, Sanders, Eddie yeah. Pinheiro, Traquan Smith, Kenneth Walker, Rashid Shahid, and Reggie Gilliam are <sighs> groined out right now. Kenneth Walker. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be Walker, groined. I don't got, know if I be groined out, man. We gotta get Walker off this list. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's it, killing me. It's uh generally a celebration when you can get yourself yeah. off of groinindex.com. <laughs> Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Kareem Hunt left Indianapolis without a deal. What is happening? Offer was made by the Colts, unable to reach an agreement. Kareem, We're, what are you doing? He, uh, it's very easy and obvious to know what Kareem Hunt is doing. He thinks he's worth more than he is. He, he, he thinks, he, and he's probably correct, that he gets one contract left. Like, he gets one more, one more check. This is and it. He's just got to leverage. He's got to leverage these teams against each other. And just hope he's playing the game right. He's playing chicken, but it's all about money here. It is, and in the it's just crazy because it's like great visit with the Saints. As soon as he put his foot on the field, they they said the Colts called and said, "Hey, we'll pay you more." Then he gets to Indianapolis. It's like it was two dollars more. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly like we don't know. Do, and I was gonna say, it, I, is it possible that Kareem went there, had the meeting, and they told him like Jonathan Taylor is not getting traded. We're bringing you here to be. A depth piece. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, I'm sure Kareem asked that question. I, I'm sure Kareem asked the question, "How much will you pay me in dollars?" Yeah, this is money. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that's impossible. I'm just saying it's a little bit of a bridge too far for me to speculate on that. Anthony Richardson will start Saturday's preseason contest in Buffalo. Good, good. Listed as co-starter with Gardner Minshew. Sam Howell. I, I really hope that they both take the first snap. <laughs> together yes they're just back there. <laughs> they line up a wishbone but it's two yes, quarterbacks two quarterbacks and you don't who's know who's gonna, gonna get the ball yeah that's what trask and mayfield are doing yeah. uh sam howe will start on friday against the browns Howl. there you go it's been a it's been a minute that oh. was today's news and notes presented by usaa insurance learn more at usaa.com slash insurance all right preseason power up All right. I've never really gone into a segment with all right before. Well, now we have. Yeah. You, but, how did it feel? Wait, not great. <laughs> um, as a fantasy manager, <laughs> we're talking about what we're looking for in this preseason, uh, specific position battles that we are paying attention to, um, things that we're excited about. You know, we've got three preseason weeks to pay attention to, three main preseason weeks. Um, I was accused of, of, of being – I, I don't know, like a party pooper with some of my negative sentiment around what's happening in the preseason. The fact that like, we just don't have the same expectations we have had in previous years. When we had four preseason weeks, it was very traditional for the third week to be 
starters maybe first, second, even third quarter. Yeah, usually three quarters. And and then you don't see them in week four. Now it, it is a mixed bag, and predominantly you don't see starters that much in the preseason. Maybe you get a quarter out of them at some point. That might, might be preseason week two. Or week three. Well, and a lot of times, in addition to that, it's not just the starters, but it's the, the or not just the offense, but it's the defense too. So, you know, if you're not able to catch every preseason game, which nobody is able to watch every single preseason game um, easily, you you don't know when you look at that box score. Okay, uh, these guys, the first string that played, they did well. Were they playing against the ones in the beginning of that game? Because the the other team might just decide. Eh, we're not playing any starters, so it's always it's it's hard to have as reliable of takeaways. I pay attention to things. It is the first time you see them in full pads. This is not combine season. You're not you know running in a straight line. So game speed. Um, you know I can remember Dalvin Cook from years back. Bad combine. You know the the preseason speed. You're like oh I get it now. There's going to be players like that this preseason. Um, at every position where you're like, it's a play here, it's a play there. It's not necessarily how many yards they have or any amount of, you know, it's not the touchdowns. It's play to play. Are you seeing some things that are special about these players to just give you a, a gauge of do they belong here? You know, a lot of these rookie storylines, it's like, do they belong here? Um, and, and don't, and, and, and this is the number one point, Jason. Don't pay attention to Allen Robinson. Go on. <laughs> yeah, that's always a good takeaway for the preseason for training camp. Um, I'm hearing good things. But yeah, yeah you, I know. The <laughs> I, I would agree with you that one of the main things I look for, I, I'm watching rookies as close as I can because th this is where you get to see that game speed. Can they pull away from NFL defenders? Um, and you're watching rotations, right? So we're going to hear, we're going to talk about the running back rotations we're going to be paying attention to. But who's first? Who's second? Who's third? Like who's getting the work in what order? And if they get an opportunity in the, you know, in the beginning of that game to have to do a little bit of a hurry up, who's in there for, you know, that it won't be a two minute drill, but, it'll, you know, it'll effectively be something like it. You know, I, I just want to look at rotations and game speed. So let's look at the running back position. Some of the position battles we're paying attention to this preseason. Jason, I want to start with you because um, this is a very interesting backfield in terms of average draft position in fantasy. They're all outside the 10th round and they're dealing with injuries like Raheem Mostert. Oh, I just revealed it. Didn't I? <laughs> Whoops. He didn't practice. And then Jeff Wilson hasn't been practicing. And then De Devon A. Chain missed practice. So you're talking the Miami backfield. Yes, I am. They, uh, they are the team I want to keep an eye on the most. I am so excited about Devon A. Chain and what he can do in this system specifically. With his speed and the way that they run this system, and all the reports from camp have been glowing about A Chain, that he's exceeded expectations, that they might be out of the Dalvin Cook sweepstakes simply because of him. Uh, the other players are saying that he's he's a dude. He's so fast. He's he's breaking tackles. Well, he's good between the tackles too. Yeah, and and you saw it in college. Uh, coming into the NFL draft, I was completely out on A Chain. I loved what he did in college, but when you're 188 pounds. At running 189, back. 189, please give him his due. He had another he meal added, this morning. He added a pound since the combine. I believe he was 188 uh, at the combine, 189 now. So he's really putting on the LBs. Ten years from now. Uh, so, but, you know, it, th where he landed was perfect for him. The opportunity with Moster and Jeff Wilson as the only other two running backs. And, and the thing is, is you saw this last year with Raheem Moster, with Jeff Wilson, um, they they ranked seventh in the NFL in fantasy points per touch. You don't have to have him get the ball twenty times for him to be really good for fantasy in this system. In this system, when you're trying to keep up with Waddle and Tyreek, and you can't stack the box, and and you've got uh you know a, a really creative offensive play caller, if you can get him to the second level, pew, he gone. Uh, let me quiz you on some. I you might already know this number off the top of your head, but I happen to be glancing at it earlier. Do you remember the yards per carry for Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson last year? I do not. I would guess that both were near five. Four point nine each. Okay. In that offense. So um very effective, but both players prone to injury. It is a committee. In Miami, is that fair to say? I mean, it's a I, full committee. I think all three players will get worked in, absolutely. Um, 31st in rush attempts last year, 
but 16th in fantasy points. Wow. Uh, Mike, you are paying attention to the I, Bears. I am paying attention to the Chicago Bears running backs because much like the Miami Dolphins, these are guys – sure, Khalil Herbert is technically at the 9-12, but this is essentially another three-pack of running backs who all have a chance, and they're all going in the 10th round right now. My chips are on Khalil Herbert. I am betting on the talents that I believe that Khalil Herbert has. Also, the reports in training camp have been. This is Khalil Herbert as the number one. It is uh, the, the rookie, Roshan Johnson, who a lot of people like, but he is currently the number three. And then Deonta Foreman, the free agent, has been brought in. And he looks like he's the number two. But it's like Khalil Herbert, I'm trying to do some quick quick box score hunting, but it looks like when when... Khalil Herbert receives at least 16 carries. It's limited. It's a small sample. But if he's at 16 carries, he's at 70-plus rushing yards. Now, that isn't always great if you're not putting in any receiving work or you're not scoring a touchdown. But if you're getting 70-plus yards a game, and if Khalil Herbert's the guy, he should see at least 15-plus carries a game because you look at what they've done with David Montgomery. Montgomery, the past four years, 200 carries, right? If you're getting that amount of yards, that's a 1,000-yard rusher in the 10th round who can give you some spike weeks. We've already seen that happen where last year uh, when you had Khalil Herbert playing for David Montgomery, he was a top 12 running back two times. He was the, he's been the number one overall. Oh, I'm sorry, that was 2021. You had last year against Houston, he was the number one overall running back. You had a stretch from week six to eight where he was a top 24 running back each of those weeks. I think he's a good player. I think the Chicago Bears offense is going to be improved. So Khalil Herbert is very interesting to me. And specifically what I'm watching for is, does Khalil Herbert come in, get a few drives, and then he's gone? Or is it Khalil Herbert comes in, gets a drive, then Deonta Foreman gets a drive, and then Khalil Herbert comes back onto the field, kind mm -hmm. of signaling, no, we're, we're going to be taking turns, we're going to be shifting guys in. So I think I think that's a pretty important thing for the team to tell us with their actions. And Roshan's that type of player that's going to get a lot of preseason work because of where he is on the depth chart right now. So you're going to get to see his skill set on display for the first time and what potential could be there over the course of the year because I believe this is Khalil Herbert's final year under contract. Uh, if I'm, I might be mistaken there. He has one more. One more. This, is, this, this year. is year three for Herbert. Um, so, so Roshan's role will be interesting as well. Deonta Foreman added this off season. I'm excited to, to uh, see how much of Jameer Gibbs we get this preseason in Detroit. David Montgomery and Gibbs join a roster that produced, you know, so many rushing touchdowns with Jamal Williams last year. A lot of effectiveness with DeAndre Swift in the past couple of seasons. I know that there is worry out there in the fantasy universe that Jameer Gibbs could just be. DeAndre Swift, it could be that level of uh, involvement and right. workload. I don't think that's going to be the case. What I am most curious about is whether you get, you know, is this going to be the Alvin Kamara emergence of Jameer Gibbs to the Mark Ingram of David Montgomery? That's the likely outcome, but we have not seen how they're going to use these guys. I think, I think we're likely to see two potential outcomes here where um, – I think Gibbs could be very, very effective for fantasy, and David Montgomery could be used way more than we think. I, I yeah. believe both of these players will produce at their average draft position. I really do. Uh, the The question about um, is Jameer Gibbs just DeAndre Swift, I think that is a little bit fair, but also you have to separate the actual talent. Gibbs is a far more talented player than Swift coming into the NFL. I mean, you could see that just by – the fact that he was drafted number 12 overall. This is a first-round talent who has incredible speed. Swift does not have Jameer Gibbs' speed. Um, Swift was a good prospect. Gibbs is a great prospect. So at the running back position, that's some of the things we're paying attention to. Quick break, back with some wideout battles. All right, I'm going to kick it off with what I'm looking for a wide receiver because it's mostly a follow-up to the name Mike threw out earlier. And it's the Ravens' wide receiver room in general because uh, sometimes these very murky situations like the backfield in Miami where guys are going in the 10th, 11th, 12th round, 
you know, they are where, you know, the diamonds are found. They're mined. Mm-hmm. Do we, we mine diamonds, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, you, you know, it's some hard work, and sometimes it's easiest in fantasy drafts to just not deal with murky situations. But the ones that are always worth dealing with are ones that involve later round draft picks because, the, you know, the cost of getting it right early in a draft because, you know, it's second, third, fourth round pick, it's, you know, you get that wrong, it's a big mistake. Maybe you take someone safer. But later in the draft, if you get it right here, it's a huge advantage. And um, here's what I know about the Baltimore Ravens wide receiver room. I don't think that all three guys are going to finish wide receiver 45, 50, and 52. Agreed. So I think you're going to have one of these players, maybe two. Is it the wide receiver 31? Is it the wide receiver 22? Is it the wide receiver 25? Like, there's going to be players finishing well above this ADP, and this ADP is there because we don't know who they are right now. And so Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Odell Beckham, um, you know, you look at possible outcomes, Beckham could be more involved than we think he, he will be. You know, this was a recruitment project by Lamar Jackson. He wanted Beckham there. So from a PPR perspective, we could get surprised. Wide receiver 52, you know, it, Beckham's on the bus list because we haven't seen it from him, but it is a place where a you could be surprised. Yeah, the 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 stat that just blows my mind is the league low twelve percent of plays that were three wide receivers last year for the Ravens. That is not just the league low; that's the lowest eleven personnel rate over the last decade. The NFL average is sixty one percent. They ran it on twelve percent of plays so getting more wide receivers out there is just inevitable yeah and they have the lowest wide receiver one average draft position for a top five drafted quarterback that's interesting in the last decade so it's literally the biggest discount you've ever had on a quarterback projected to be a top five quarterback ever and so um i don't know if you want to give them each an award like you know, uh, Zay Flowers maybe is the best, uh, the safest, I would say, in, in to some regard. Do you agree with that? Jason's I, I, looking. So my only worry was Zay Flowers. I love Zay Flowers. I've talked him up. I, I think he's great. I think he's going to thrive. But to start, it seems like in they've still got Isaiah Likely, and they're still going to play with two tight ends. For sure. And so when that happens and there's two wide receivers, Let's call it 50% of the time now. Oh, it's the B-Boys. It's probably the B-Boys. It's probably Bateman and Beckham, and Zay Flowers is not playing. Now, obviously, Bateman is has struggled with health. Odell Beckham has struggled with health, and it could very easily be Flowers and whoever is healthy. But I think if all three are healthy, you worry, like, is Zay Flowers getting enough snaps to it's be a, a star? It's actually a really, really good point with that number of 12%. Uh, three wide receiver plays. I mean, obviously, with Todd Monken coming in, you certainly expect them to run a, a much faster pace and three wide receiver set. Uh, th that will be far more of their base offense, but it's still one of the things where you would expect right now Zay Flowers is the slot guy. What's crazy is I think you're going to be able to play, like, you know how it gets in fantasy, by weeks, injuries. I think Flowers, Bateman, and Beckham are always going to be players that you're like, well, I can I can put them in the lineup this week, and I might get something special out of them because mm -hmm. they're all going to have good weeks. Um, Mike, Jason, what are you watching for at wide receiver this preseason? I'll hop in because you talked about an exciting team. I want to talk about a not exciting team because those still matter for fantasy. Boring. Boring teams. B -b 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 Boring. Pa <laughs> Patriots. <laughs> um, the, the New England Patriots are fascinating to me. What is happening? There's another team that is going from what I think was a bad offensive system to what can only be a better offensive system, I hope, uh, with uh, Joe Judge and Matt Patricia out of the way trying to do that science experiment with them running the offense for the Patriots and bringing in Bill O'Brien. I want to see one. I want to see Mac Jones. Is he good? He looked like he was going to be good rookie year. We forget that. Like he, he's a, he's a post type uh, candidate. Yeah, I mean he he could actually be good. And the problem was the offensive system and the lack of weapons last year. Yeah. And if you look at nebulous wide receiving cores, uh, Devontae Parker's been a riser this uh, training camp. The you know the the last month or so he got paid. Um, I know he's gone 
up and up in our rankings. Not that he's super high. You've got Juju Smith-Schuster, who they gave money to, a, a three-year contract to. You've got last year's second-round rookie wide receiver who was a disappointment in Tyquan Thornton. And been a disappointment this preseason. Yeah, I mean, he he's actually been really good this preseason with the twos. <laughs> he's doing really well with when he's running with Bailey Zappi. Mm. Um, zap, zap, zap. Zap, zap, zap. Um, but has not done as well uh, with the ones, which uh, kind of is what we saw on the field last year. And then you've got uh, Demario Douglas is a name that we need to bring up. Those who has him in Dynasty? I huh. do. No, no, you, no, you I, don't. Oh, no, you don't. Son of a gun, you got No, him. you don't. I was thinking of the. Uh, I can't even remember <laughs> no, the. No, you don't. I got. I grabbed the the the. The Demario Davis of the Bengals. No, I can't you, remember. Yeah. You didn't even get his name right. It's Demario Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, whatever. That's why he's... You did get Demario Davis. Oh, good. You just didn't my get claim, Demario Douglas. My claim for Demario... Yes. No, he's, he's making waves in camp. Yeah, I mean... And, the and, Demario Douglas <laughs> dynasty stash flex. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look, it wasn't the... It's not about the name, Mike. It was about the fact that I have him and he thought he had him. That ah, was what made it fun. Okay. Although... If you want to do like you got Calvin Austin and I went and looking for him, so I already had him. Yeah, that's what I said. You yeah. got you. I didn't you, pick you, him up. I held him. At yeah. some point, you picked him up. No, uh, Jason's uh, actually been he's been in Calvin Austin believer since last year. We were looking through our Dino Junior. Can't team, overcome Allen Robinson and in the slot and Calvin Austin. By the way, uh, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who back up to Allen Robinson. Uh, his rookie season was was put on ice, and he's. They they're starting to talk. Oh, him you've up. had him that long. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would. My point was going to be, I'm like, eh, maybe Calvin Austin's a guy we can get rid of, and he gave me the laser beam eyes <laughs> of how dare you even yeah. think about dropping Calvin Austin? But he's four three two speed. <laughs> they have two six rounds. I mean, Demario Douglas is a sixth round rookie, as is uh, Kayshawn Booty, rocking everywhere, and Kendrick Bourne's still there. So and yeah. Hunter Henry. So I just want to see the passing attack. The and Mike offense. Gusecki. And Hunter, yeah, Hunter Henry is probably the the most valuable piece here. Okay, yeah, I mean that is um, that's a dirty wide receiver room to try to find value, but I think they will be probably. Mike said it the other day, better on offense than we expect. There will be production there. Jacoby Myers in the midst of a horrible offense last season still had value week to week. Mike, you're looking at Jacksonville. Yeah, I'm looking at. They're a very exciting team. Uh, the if the Trevor Lawrence breakout that that like Jason and a lot of people are calling for, if that happens, I mean we have a lot of value to extract here. Calvin Ridley, the presumed number one wide receiver who hasn't seen a football field in basically two years or so, he's being drafted as the wide receiver nineteen. Now, what we know is when Calvin Ridley's on last time we really saw a healthy Calvin Ridley, he was sensational. I think he was. He was a top five wide receiver, maybe number three or so on the season. He just he's fantastic. But then on the other hand, Christian Kirk, last year's wide receiver eleven, although a little bit inconsistent, still finished as the wide receiver eleven. He has plummeted to being drafted currently on sleeper as the wide receiver thirty one. Like, are we really that confident that Calvin Ridley is 12 wide receiver spots better than last year's wide receiver 11. Was that a rhetorical? It, um, it, um, it, you can ask, answer it if you want. What do you think, Jay? Um, 12 spots better, sure. I don't have a problem with that, but I think both guys might be too low. I mean, you saw two years ago when Christian Kirk was in Arizona, uh, was in Arizona as the two, he finished as the wide receiver 26. So I do st still think he's being drafted too low. So that's what I'm watching for is do we get to see Calvin Ridley? Does he really look that much more special than everyone else for the Jaguars wide receivers? And let's see some Christian Kirk action. Like it's just it's wild to me to be for Kirk to have been that good for fantasy football and now being pretty much dismissed at that there's there's no way. There's no way he can be anywhere close to that. He can't be the number one. And uh if you if you know the way fantasy psychology works. Sometimes we don't get in on the twos in these offenses because we <laughs> like the allure sure. of the ones. So uh, there, there can be value there. Uh, we'll call that the Eric Decker syndrome sometimes, right? Sure. The Brandon Marshall in New York and Eric Decker was just as good. Um, or also Demarius Thomas in 
Denver and Eric Decker was just as good. <laughs> it's yeah. always Eric Decker. <laughs> All right, a couple things I want to touch on here uh, before best ball breakdown. Other players, battles, situations that we're watching, and then I want to I want to cast a coin into the wishing well of something that we're dreaming of this off uh, this preseason. But let's start with that other situation you're keeping your eyes on. Yeah, I, I find this year more than ever I'm looking at the quarterbacks. I brought up yesterday that I really want to get my eyeballs on how Deshaun Watson looks. I want to see if he's looking in rhythm and can hit normal passes unlike what we saw last year. And Jordan Love. Jordan Love is everything to a bunch of different – you know, Dobbs has been rising up and just – he's really making some noise in the training camp – timeline Christian Watson is a highly drafted prospect they will go as Jordan Love goes so I really need to see if he's good Th those two guys I'm going to be paying attention to makes sense I want to see all the rookie tight ends um I was joking with Jason that this you know he may get tortured by some actually yeah. productive rookie tight ends this year probably not Sam Laporta but possible been been very uh been running with the ones been very targeted in camp we're going to talk about him in a second Dalton Kincaid Dalton Kincaid has, has earned the trust and will be running with the ones throughout the season in Buffalo. Luke Musgrave, I don't know if you saw the camp report today, mm -hmm. Jason. I think yep. you probably did. You know, just having a downfield threat that the comments made out of the uh, Green Bay area is first time since Jermichael Finley that you have somebody that can threaten down the field and make a difference in the passing game. Uh, the schoon man back on the field for oh. Dallas. Come on. Come on, Luke. Um, has to compete with Fergie over there. Yeah. So, uh, and I feel like I'm forgetting an, uh, another rookie or two. I mean, uh, I, Mike, m uh, Michael Mayer, but yeah, he Michael is, Mayer in, in Las Vegas. He has been missing camp the last few days. I don't know. I don't know if it's an injury or, or what it is, but he has not been participating. And we've got what big Darnell, uh, Washington. Yeah. yeah. Darn Darnell, right. Last I saw, he has caught eight total passes in all of camp what four of them are touchdowns <laughs> so when they get around the goal yeah, line actually man that might this hurt fryer me monster of a man that if you're not familiar with him he is uh they call him the sixth old lineman he is a freak of nature physically i mean yeah you get around the goal line it's like just just yeah. toss it to just him lob it you up. ever seen mo alley cox before <laughs> yeah um darnell could hurt fryer a little bit but he could also really help Najee Harris yes in that offensive line so I I want to see those rookie tight ends I love scout I, I think I enjoy scouting the tight end position in preseason so um, that's something I'm looking forward to quick note on Michael Mayer bumps and bruises no cause for concern thank okay. you and what I'm going to be uh, another thing I'm looking for is Rashad White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers oh, that's a good one and more specifically that Tampa Bay Bucks offensive line Ooh, don't you don't want to look <laughs> I do. You don't want to look. I, I need to. Oh, man. Because if it's bad, I need to know. It's rated R. You, close, you cover <laughs> this your this eyes. Is, Children for, don't watch. This, this is for grown -ups. This offensive line is it's not going to be good. Red yeah. band. Yeah. So let's find out <laughs> the red band offensive line. <laughs> I mean, they do wear red the, jerseys. Yeah. Uh, so let's – did they fix anything? Is Rashad White truly the dude? Because at the running back 28, if Rashad White is – like that, that like a really main time running back, and he's going to be used a lot in the passing game. Which we got the report that that Chase Edmonds could be the third down running back. I don't know if that will hold. Yeah, when when, when the uh, when the action's really happening on the field, and like, well, we could pull Rashad White out and put Chase on the field, and the coaches will be like, eh, I don't know. If yeah, that's, that's I don't know if that's such a good idea. You sure about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be that's going to be the head coach. So Rashad White I think is is very interesting to watch in the preseason. Throw Trask and Baker's battle in there too Absolutely. because it's going to have an impact on Godwin and uh Mike Evans and Otten and these running backs and their usage based on who wins over there. The wishing well. But I want to know your personal preseason wish. What dreamy situation what outlandish situation selfish wishes selfish yeah. for me it's preseason wish look i'm jealous of javante getting healthy not going on the wolverine pop. blood i need my Brees. oh i need to see my Brees boy i need him out there i want to see him in preseason i mean i just want 
Are we expecting to see him on the field? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> that's why it's a wish. This is this is why I'm throwing the coin in so that it can come true. You might need to throw a few coins in. Yeah, yeah. look, that's a silver dollar. <laughs> All right, so you want you want Brees back? I just want to see him healthy. in preseason, yeah. Uh, mine is uh, I want uh, it's all caps here in the doc. I want Josh Jacobs to return. Yeah, just make it easy on us. Take the Saquon route. Take an extra few buckaroos. Get back with the team. You know, I ju just make it easy on me for uh, make it easy on all the Josh Jacobs drafters to not be gambling in late August. Do you have and this is. You, I don't know if you've even thought about it, but just top of your head, like a, a timeline where if you get to this date and Josh Jacobs still hasn't come back, then, you're, oh, then you're, your worry meter will just... Yeah, I know, I know his date. It's Go. the day after our draft. <laughs> <laughs> when he has him, yeah. he goes, oh, no. I mean, realistically, I think it's like you get through three preseason games and we have... That's all of them. And we haven't heard a whisper. Um, the day after the third preseason game, if if we don't know what's going on, that is when I'm. You're gonna just have to start adjusting expectations because if right now they rescinded the tag on August 10th, you're gonna find a new home. Yeah, and you're gonna find an opportunity to contribute earlier in the season. If it happens a week before the kickoff, you're in big trouble. Like I don't care if Kansas City goes and signs you. I don't care if Denver signs you. Like. You're not a part of day one plans if that's the case. You're gonna, uh, it's gonna be hard to turn that over on week one, two, three, four. Uh, injury risk will go up with no camp. You know, at least statistically. Um, I th this is why I don't want to deal with any of those questions. So my wish is that Josh takes a little flight from Cabo or wherever he's at right now and strolls into the building and says, "I'm here." And I got 1,700 rushing yards I'm bringing with me. Yeah, Vegas is fun. Go home. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah you normally would go. Like, other players in other cities, like Jonathan Taylor probably flew to Vegas yeah. to wait out his contract. Just stay home. All right, my wish. Yours is so funny, Mike. My wish. Look, it's not often <laughs> that we have hopes or dreams or desires for a third-string quarterback <laughs> to get traded. <laughs> But here we are, and it, my selfish wish for my dynasty team is that Trey Lance gets traded, and so we just can know. Do like, we not need I to dig into that and just ask where? Like, no. What, you want Washington or Washington would be great. <laughs> like any, <laughs> any, just not San Francisco. And he's not going to start for San Francisco if if Brock Purdy is there. If Brock Purdy. If That's something the, goes wrong with Brock Purdy, I don't even know if it's going to be Trey Lance. It might be Samuel Darnold. I just don't. I just need to know. I need to see it. I need to see five games. Give me five games of Trey Lance as a starter. You're never going to get not it. in a monsoon. Just Trey Lance as a starter, and let's all find out together. You're yeah, never going to get never it. Gonna see never going to get it. I know. <laughs> That's <laughs> why it's a wish. Honestly, he, he may have a, the highest chance of starting as a third stringer in San Francisco. The way their injuries go. Yeah. Is not. But, a, I mean, that's a fair point. But you got hopes and dreams for Lance. Now Lance will get preseason time, right? Uh, so the yeah, trade, the I trade has know. to come when he goes out there. I mean, let's put it this way, Mike. He's probably going to be facing third string defenses. He's going to oh, dominate. He's going to look great. You're he's going to. He's going to dominate he, him. He, Mike said he wants to see five starts. He did not specify regular season. So over the next two years, five games. I didn't just say start five games. Okay. So give him the if we give him the whole preseason, like if they give him all three, I'll count it. All right. I'll take three of those. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Let us know your own preseason wishes. If you're watching on YouTube, leave it in the comments. Come, come join our Discord. You can get there on the fantasyfootballers.com, and it's free to join over there as well. The community. You can ask your questions, share your dreams, and commiserate on all your sadness if something goes wrong. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Oh, here we are. So, because we're in training camp season, about to hit the preseason, Andy, you brought up one of your favorite things to watch for in preseason is the tight end position. Yeah. And we've been monitoring it in training camp because, especially for best ball, when you're playing underdog, my personal favorite builds, I, I pretty much either I grab Mark Andrews and then another decent, consistent uh, tight end like a Higby, or else if that doesn't happen, almost all of my rosters are three tight end builds. And the reason that I like and I prefer three tight end builds is because at the very end of your draft, 
when you're in round 16, 17, 18, the tight ends there are not zeros. The tight ends there don't need an injury ahead of them. They're on the field. They're running routes. You're just hoping this week they get the touchdown. So when you get those, they're, they they can be very valuable picks. Um, and whereas oh, you, you grab a running back there, you're just hoping it's usually an insurance back and maybe there's an injury ahead of them that, that – you know, cracks into your lineup. I, I just wanted to throw this in there because we, we normally preface it before we dig into the best ball breakdown, but we are talking about best ball drafts, best ball lineup formations for underdog fantasy. When you're in there building out best ball teams, which if you're not familiar with that format, you draft and then that's it. You're done. You get to uh, get the, you know, the fruit of your labor throughout the season without uh, adjusting your lineup. And you really get to dunk on people for your drafting ability because it's one of those things where, you know, sometimes we talk about <clears throat> with Ultimate Draft Kit, right? You're building a foundation to not lose at the draft. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a uh, that's what you do exclusively in best ball. Right. But you don't win your your championship at the draft and your redraft league. You win it at the draft here in underdog. Like who drafted the best team? The starters will be made for you. And so when you're doing a three tight end build, uh, there are a handful of uh, tight end training camp risers who've been on the move from what we've seen. And I want to give you three of my favorite picks that have risen in the last two weeks because of training camp news. So you're still willing to draft these players even after they've risen in ADP? Yes, because they have risen to still too low. Um, they, they were, uh, great values. Now they are very good values. I'm going to start with Hunter Henry. Uh, just yeah. talked about the Patriots. He has been, he's a riser. Mac Jones, favorite target in camp. He has, and, and Gesicki has had almost no, um, like very few targets and receptions in camp. Yeah. He made one great play. It's kind of what Mike Gesicki mm -hmm. does. He, yeah. Yeah. They did. Uh, we're talking about the catch. The catch. The, the catch was reported uh, far and wide on on Twitter. Yeah, and, and Ferguson, Jake Ferguson, has been moving up the list as well. I mean, he is um, seems to be the clear number one tight end in Dallas. A murky situation that's now becoming more clear. Rookie tight ends, even with a full camp, hard to contribute. Ferguson's been the guy, so you know that's an opportunity there for sure. And, and he's gotten it done, like. Schoonman has not been there, and yeah, he's it, been hurt. Sometimes, you know, that gives a, a player an opportunity, and they don't show it. But in camp, yeah, I, he's been the guy. Yeah, absolutely. And there's 89 targets vacated from Dalton Schultz, and then Laporta. We brought him up too in in Detroit, where look, this was an offense where where T.J. Hawkinson had burst games at tight at the tight end position. Mike, yes, absolutely. Uh, what my favorite part of the Sam Laporta is Lions beat reporter. Tim Twenty Man. Oh, that's a great name. What is what is yeah. this name? Yeah, Tim Twenty Man. Tim Twenty Man. This is the first time you've heard of Tim Twenty Man. I apparently. Oh man, I've not I've not paid attention. Great yeah. reporter. Because when you have a name like Twenty Man, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna look. I'm, I'm gonna get imagine, this guy. I'm imagine if this your guy name was imagine if your name was like Fifteen Man. What oh, a, what a loser! Yeah, Why? no, that's that's no good. Normally, your uh, your your surname, right? Like that comes from a historical source, like. You know, there's meaning behind it, but like Ooh. this was like, does he have an ancestor? Was like he's as strong as twenty men. Oh, I thought this was lineage. Like his son will oh, be twenty one tw man, <laughs> and then they just every they they know exactly. They don't do who the his. junior senior stuff. No, they just add on. They just change the last name to increase it. Exactly. There have been twenty men in my history, and I am the twenty first man. Gran my grandson is twenty two man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what his quote was is that. Um, Sam Laporte has been taking first team reps since day one and doesn't look out of place at all. It's going to have a big role for the offense starting in week one. Keep in mind, Jamison Williams has a six week suspension and there are the fourth most vacated targets in the NFL for the Detroit Lions. I really like the talent of Sam Laporte. You heard that, huh? The Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions. I did. You heard it too. Oh, I felt it. Yeah. All right, Goodness. yeah. I mean, so those three guys have had great camps. Hunter Henry uh, for the New England Patriots, Jake Ferguson for the Dallas Cowboys, and Sam Laporta for the Detroit Lions. And if you're like, ah, Jason, I thought you don't draft rookie tight ends. Rookie tight ends in best ball, you, I don't think any rookie tight end is going to have a great season where you're going to draft them in redraft and you're just going to plug them in and love it. 
But if you remember, like last year, Greg Dulcich had a handful of really great, impactful games. And while relevant I, fantasy weeks, yeah. And while I still think Dalton Kincaid on underdog is being overdrafted for what he'll produce, he will still have good weeks as well. And you know, he, he, this is a the tight end eighteen going one hundred and fifty second overall in Sam Laporta. Now, just want to make sure you, you're talking about. Broncos second string tight end Greg Dulcich uh actually if you mm, look yeah. at the quotes from uh Sean Payton I don't need quotes he said there's a slash between yeah them. he said there's a slash well, the Dallas Cowboys listed Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot as co-starters yeah and you, Pey they could have Peyton Hendershot you know shout out to the blocking <laughs> tight ends I'm not Troutman just... Hendershot those guys can block co-starters listed all the time mm. in training camp not for the Denver Broncos you know I don't know if I need this in my life. No. I don't know. I don't think we need the Troutman. We don't need. To, I didn't renew the subscription, man. I, I unsubscribed from that newsletter. I yeah. don't need it. You know who resubscribed? No, oh, God. Head coach Sean Payton. No, no, oh, no. You can't discount what Sean Payton said with his mouth. He and then and then say that it's him. Oh, this is upsetting. Yeah, no, it's, Sean it's, Sean Payton straight up said it's a slash. They're co-starters. Look, it's 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 a joke. It's Greg Dulcich as the pass catching tight end, but I will say this: nothing for the 2023 season mm. would bring me mm. a greater joy than Adam Troutman yes. <laughs> doing something. It will be Troutman and Sutton I, I all over the field in Denver making Mike. I really hope it's your redemption <laughs> that redemption it, year that it is Week One. I mean, if, oh, man. if Troutman oh. gets like two touchdowns all season, but they both come in Week One, Mike will do a show. A la mode. I mean, you will come in, no clothes on, just <laughs> be, ready to rock. To be clear, that's how Jason describes being <laughs> naked. Just in case you confuse it with ice cream on the side. Um, all right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100. Using the code BALLERS, enjoy a couple of preseason games tonight. And guess what? We're going to come back here tomorrow. We got a mock draft episode for you, and we're mixing it up. It's going to be a full PPR, 10-team, three-wide receiver. See you there. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.